It was a real mess, that's for sure. In fact, that was when I decided to go freelance. His face looked tight as he spoke. What do you mean? I met with some of the families of people who died in the crash over the course of a couple years while I was looking for the truth. Not all of them, of course. I couldn't find a few people, but I tracked down as many of them as I could. At some point during all of that, I had sort of a revelation, I guess you could say. I realized I wanted, needed, to write a story about what had happened to all these people, so that the world would never forget about it. So I gathered up all the facts and interviews that I'd collected, put them together into one hell of a story. Shrubby's mouth thinned into a line. But things didn't quite work out the way I'd hoped. What? Why not? My boss thought, the ar thought my article was boring. He wanted me to throw in some wild speculation, exaggerate, anything that would make it more sensational, something people would talk about. That's horrible. Damn right, and I refused. These people had already suffered enough. I wasn't going to use them just to get my boss's readership riled up. It turned out that decision wasn't up to me. My boss rewrote the story and sent it to the press on the sly. Didn't say word one to me. Oh, that sucks. He changed everything, even put words in the mouths of people I'd interviewed. Turned it into something even a supermarket gossip rag wouldn't publish. Then when it got out, it blew up. People were furious. That's awful. Since the article had still had my name on it, I got bags of hate mail, mostly from the families I'd talked to. Any credibility I'd managed to build up was gone, just like that. All I had left was a mailbox full of guilt and the knowledge that I'd failed my story. That's why you became a freelancer? Yeah, I couldn't go back to the weasels who'd corrupted my words, but I couldn't let go of my passion for journalism either. The man on the edge! Sorry, little lady, kind of went off on a tangent there. Must be the adrenaline wearing off. Hope you didn't bore you too much. From his reaction, the look on my face must have been kind of strange. Maybe a little bit. You kind of bore sometimes. Wasn't boring at all. In fact, I'm glad you told me. I like knowing more about you. You are kind of crucial to this entire story, so it's awesome. Well, I admit I'm a little surprised you actually thought it was interesting. So, Hogstein is fighting the wrong person. Hogstein's real beef is with capitalism. And terrible journalism. Thanks, yellow journalism. You're the best. Can you blame me? You're a mystery! Listening to your story was like reading a really good book. Kinda hoping you'd tell me more. You pulling my leg, although I guess I've never really told anyone about this stuff before. Hey, we're doing well. Have to admit, feel pretty nice to finally get it off my chest. It's good to hear. Oh, that reminds me. What, something wrong? Yeah, I told you to stop apologizing. Oh, <laughs> yeah, I guess you did. Sorry, I uh, smacked his forehead and I couldn't help but grin. No more apologies from either of us. We don't have anything to apologize for. You're right. Saki's running that apology line over and over just to keep him on, on edge. Like, I'm an adult. I'm an adult. I'm going to make you keep reminding you of that thing that makes you think I'm an adult. I'm just going to run into the ground. Don't say I'm sorry. Don't say I'm sorry. I'm, gonna, I'm an adult. Don't say I'm sorry. Uh, we should probably get, get a move on now. He climbed to his feet on his own, but still looked a little unsteady. You going to be okay? I'd better. Mine's waiting for me. Okay. Last room. What's your plan, kiddo? On the other side of the door in the back of the arena was a room covered in lavish decorations. There's a throne in front of which was a stone with a large sword stuck in it. On the throne was Mai. Oh, there we go. Mai! We ran up to her. Hi! She grinned when she noticed us. Are you okay? Did Hogstein do anything to you? Hogs time? She looked at us confused. Uh, no, I had a lot of fun. Pink Piggy gave me candy. Pink? I didn't think Hogstein was wearing pink. Pink. Lemons. Pink lemons, lemons, pinks. Yes, okay. Yes. Definitely something strange there, but Shirobi didn't seem concerned with it. What else did you do? Um, well, we got some swords and beat the black piggies, and then I got to be king! <laughs> king? What are you talking about? She seemed happy, and it looked like Hogstein treated her well, just like he'd said he would. It sounded like they'd just been playing until we arrived. My, are you saying you went through this? We went. You went with this guy because he said he'd give you some candy? 
Hmm. My smile had started to waver, and she looked over at me, then back at Shirabe. He was there when I woke up, and, and he said he was your friend. I bet he did! Why didn't you tell me what you were doing before you ran off? Uh, Shirabe? Tapped him on the shoulder, and he sighed. What am I supposed to do here? How about just hug her? And, like, say everything's gonna be okay, because she just got kidnapped. He looked like he was honestly at a loss. There you go! Give her a hug! <laughs> yeah, do that! Just give her a hug! Hug! Nice, strong, friendly hug! Do it! Now! You two! Get to hugging! Wrapped his arms around her anyway. Daddy! I'm just glad you're safe, kiddo. My hugged him back, at least as much as her tiny arms could manage. I'm sorry, Daddy. Did I do something bad? You know what? Never you mind, kid. What matters is that you're okay. Shrabi gave me a wink over my shoulder. <clears throat> Parenting skills. Looks like they're starting to warm up to each other. That makes me happy. He smiled back. Well, 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 I didn't think you'd make it this far, honestly. Probably should have taken your little girl back to my castle. I almost jumped as Hogstein's voice blared out of the speakers somewhere over our heads. You. Cut the crap, pig. We beat your thugs, and that means we beat your game, right? Fine, I accept your victory. I now release my Shirabe to you as an exceedingly generous reward. Then with a the click, he was gone. Hooray! <sighs> Looks like we did it, although I'm not sure, quite sure how. I'm just glad we got my back. I'm happy you're here. Almost on cue, the door leading outside slid open with a heavy grinding noise. Well, time we headed back to the others, I guess. Good work, everyone. Proud of us all. High fives all around. We got our hugs and we got out of there. Exit dumped us out into the plaza in front of Castle Hogstein. It's only four. They're probably still in the middle of today's game. So we bailed out on two games. I wouldn't sweat it. What do you say we take a little time off while we wait? That sounds pretty good. I was mentally and physically exhausted. If I could have, I would have sat down right then and there and slept for a week. Can't go back to the hotel though, so what do we do? We should probably go to the game and help them out and like save the day if we need to. Heh, <laughs> your stomach's making noises. Ah, maybe it's trying to tell us something. I'm pretty hungry too. In fact, I hadn't had anything to eat since the snack with Shirabi in the Coliseum. Well then, I'd say our only option is the restaurant, yeah? Let's go! Hooray, let's eat! So we're bailing on everyone again. But that will lead us into day four. Day five is the shopping one. Day six, day five, yeah, day five, they didn't they didn't need multiple people, so that's fine. Cool, awesome, great. Day six is the rock star one. And we just beat day seven. Like, he's like, okay, you're good. So I don't know. I don't know if we'll have to do that over again or not. The restaurant was open and the staff was there, but nobody seemed to be cooking. Are you guys not open yet? Piglets shook their heads apologetically. I guess they're not ready. We'll just starve to death out here. We are a little early for dinner. Daddy, where's the food? No, I'm honestly, I'm not sure, kiddo. Give me a second. Charlie headed over to one of the piglets and began to talk. After a moment, they nodded to one another and disappeared into the Chinese section. What are they doing? You want to take a peek? Yeah! Let's go spy on him. We headed over to the where Shirabe had gone. He was looking around inside a fridge. Looks like we've got some cold rice, eggs, green onions. He plucked ingredients out of the fridge as he mumbled, stacking them deftly on the counter next to him. It's leftovers! He can cook? I think we're about to find out. He sure doesn't look like someone who'd know how to cook. I started to rethink my assumption, though, as I watched him. He was far from delicate, but there was no denying he did know what he was doing. Before long, a delicious aroma started to waft out of the work he was out of the wok he was cooking in. Oh, that smells really good. Yeah, quite surprised, in fact. Let's go wait for him back at the table. Chatting away. Shirabi appeared about ten minutes later with several large steaming bowls. Bon appetit, ladies! 
He dropped a mountainous plate of fried rice on the table, followed by a bowl of hearty soup. Oh my gosh, this looks delicious. Good job, Daddy. Felt my stomach growl as Shirabe scooped out set servings of rice and soup for each of us. Thanks, Shirabe. Thanks, Daddy. Ah, we'll dig in. Took a bite of the rice first. It wasn't too sticky or too dry, and the seasoning was perfect. Do you like it? It's amazing! All of this is amazing. I had no idea you could cook. He grabbed the back of his head and shrugged. Well, even a bachelor can't live on instant noodles and take out forever. Not true. Instant noodles forever. I've picked up a few tricks over the years. I've been on my own. The seasoning is incredible. It's just the right amount. I feel like I could eat this forever. Your food is awesome, Daddy. Shirabe broke into a wide smile. I'm real glad to hear that, my. Here, have some more. Shea Shirabe is an all-you-can-eat establishment. I was shoveling fried rice into her mouth so fast she could barely breathe. I wonder if they like the same stuff since they're family and all. You eat too, eat! Right, right. Shabby nodded and fell to eating his own rice. Once again, taking the doing the communion thing, communal eating. A wonderful trope in writing. is a way for us all to bond and connect together. If they spend more time together, hopefully they'll get to know each other better. That would be nice anyway. Oh! Alright, I guess that's the text sound. Something wrong? No, it's from my uncle. How's it going over there? I'm sure things are tough, but I hope you're not doing too badly. But if they're bad, my advice to you is not to think about whether or not you can do something, just think about doing it. However hard things get, just keep pushing forward and I know you'll succeed. I hope that you'll never stop trying. I read through this his message again and felt his encouragement wash away my exhaustion. No matter what happened, I wouldn't give up. Your uncle sounds like a pretty great guy. He nodded as I read what Uncle Keiji had sent to me. I put down my food for a minute and wrote a quick message back telling my uncle about how Shirabe and I had been working together to find his daughter. And send. Oh man, I kind of said some really nice things about Shirabe, didn't I? Hmm, something up? Uh, nothing. Uh, shouldn't the game have ended by now? Wonder how they're doing. Then the restaurant's door opened. You're back! It was the rest of our companions alright, but... When I saw they were carrying Urabe, I stopped short. Right on cue. Urabe from the big tank. Soaking wet, appeared to be unconscious. Whoa, are you guys okay? They seem just as surprised to see us. It's been a long time. How did you get all those bruises? You look awful. Hogstein set up another game just for us. We managed to beat it and get my back, but it wasn't exactly a walk in the park. Are you saying he took my? Seems like it, but he didn't hurt her or anything. She's fine. But he did say some twisted things about what he was going to do to her, and that's messed up. That's good and all, but kidnapping a little girl, that's pretty low, even for that asshole. It is. It is quite depressing. What about you guys? Did you find Urabe? <laughs> Obviously. Urabe was the prize, I guess you could say, of the last game we played. Somewhat similar to yours, I suppose. He's breathing and his pulse is steady. He should come around in a while, but as you can see, he's soaking wet. Not only that, but, not only that, but his face was very pale and looked like he was shivering. If we don't do something, he could catch a cold, or shit, and maybe even pneumonia. Can you turn on a heater? Hit it, Piggy! Got him. Piglet nodded ran off. A few seconds later, I felt the restaurant begin to warm up. Piglet returned with an armload of towels that he handed to Wakasa. I guess we can dry him off with these. He dumped the towels in front of the table. On the table, in front of him. Damn, you're useful. <laughs> I know I am. Piglet scratched his head in an embarrassed sort of way and scuttled back into the kitchen. We should get him out of these clothes, too. Right, let's get him off and dry him and wrap him up. I can give you a hand. They set to work pulling Arabe's sopping clothes off, and I quickly turned around. i give you some warning next time. No need to panic, little lady. I'm not panicking, just being polite. Come over here, Mai. I can't look. 
There's nothing over there you need to see. Now, come on. I hustled Maya a few tables away and remained properly ignorant until they had finished wrapping Urabe up. Alright, he's decent now. Oogie! Turned around and saw Urabe laid across a couple of chairs wrapped in numerous towels. He looks like a mummy! He kinda does. I mean, she's like, I like this kid. My, you shouldn't say things like that. Yeah! Mummies are very inappropriate. Shouldn't say someone looks like a mummy if they look like a mummy. We still had some time uh, until the hotel arrived, so we decided to stay at the restaurant while Urabe warmed up. After everyone had relaxed a bit and finished their dinner, Shirabe began to talk. I think I've told you all that I've been after a particular story for several years now, and I think it's time I explained what. Did we read, read this? No. So what is it? Bus crash. Alright, we're gonna put everything together. So now that he's finally explaining all of this to all of our other compatriots, they're all going to put together how they're all associated together with the same thing. What the hell's going on here? Could it really just be a coincidence that Shirabe, Shido, and Mirashi all had a connection to the same bus crash? Father was a detective too. Right, and me and the other commenters, when this episode happened last time, had a lot of issues trying to figure out who was in what car with the bus crash and there was a bunch of things and buses and people's mentors and fathers and family members and other stuff all in it. Very annoying. But uh, yes, Bunnykins was in there and I think it was me and Bunnykins. Yeah, we were both kind of trying to figure that out. I wouldn't go that far, but yeah, something like that. Shelby grunted and scratched his beard. An active detective suspects it isn't an accident. Then suddenly, word comes down to the end of the investigation. Alright, your turn, Mitarashi. What can you tell us? Well, when I was still in elementary school, my parents died in that crash. Mm-hmm. My dad was a journalist for some magazine who was always chasing down some stories, so he didn't really see a lot of him at home. Anyway, that day my parents had gone out to some have some fun because we knew work was going to be getting crazy in the next few weeks. Then on the way home, the bus jumped the driver, and, well, that was it. There's the one. Your name's Mitarashi. Couldn't be him. Although, what the hell are you mumbling about? Oh, just, I didn't, don't suppose you know. A journalist who went by Susumu Kishiya? That's my dad. Boosh. Why the hell aren't you a Kishiya? After my parents died, my mom's mom took me in. Just started going by Mitarashi after that. My god. What's going on here? Yeah, it all makes sense now. You're his son! Ha! Before any of us knew what was happening, Shirabe threw his arms around Mitarashi and hugged him. What the hell? Okay, this is getting a little weird for me. I knew he had a son, but damn, you sure grew up into a man. Oh, I knew he had a son, but sure, you grew up into a man, didn't you? Them two together. There we go. It's a good combo. Larger man didn't seem to share his excitement and looked away awkwardly. You might want to tone it down a little. Mayoshi is telling you to tone it down a little. That means you gotta pull it way back. Right, of course, my apologies. Yeah, don't worry about it. I can't believe you knew my dad, though. I didn't just know your father. He's practically the reason I'm a journalist. I can't begin to tell you how much I owe him. Yeah, well, damn. Can't say I saw that one coming. So, three of the seven of us are somehow tied to the Canado bus crash. That can't be a coincidence. Agreed. Augustine probably picked us specifically. So you think he brought us here for a reason? Uh, yes, but probably not you. You were a volunteer, remember? Alright, Wakasa, Mayoshi. You guys got nothing. At least for right now. And then Mayoshi will be like, Oh wait, I remember now! I was the only witness! Awkward. <sighs> He'd been... He'd given up living with Mai because he was worried his investigation might put her in danger. That reminds me. If it's like the longer I'm at it, the more I need to know the truth. At this point, I don't think I could even give up if I wanted to. He's getting close to that truth. 
Jumped out of bed, hopped in the shower, hoping to clear my head. Whew, that was refreshing. And guess who it is? Shirabe? My! Doi. Getting ahead of myself, getting too excited. It's nice to see you, but is everything okay? Um, I want you to come back to the room with me. The You mean Shirabe's room? Mm-hmm. What's going on there? Did Shirabe tell her to come get me or something? Okay, sure, give me some second. Something's happened. What's going on? Shirabe's gonna- I'm gonna get to Shirabe's room, it's gonna be like his foot is huge. It's gonna be like, oh, pfft, you're not walking on that, kid. As soon as I stepped through his door, Shirabe sat up quickly from the bed and looked a surprised look on his face. Huh? I thought you asked her to come get me? No, no, I didn't. What? Mai's gonna hook us up. Mai! Did you bring her here, Mai? Yeah. What on earth? I wanted to sleep with you guys. Uh-huh. What? All three of us in one bed. Shirabe frowned. I think you're being a little selfish there, kiddo. You're putting her in a pretty awkward position. Does that mean she can't? Oh, well, that's, um... Oh, jeez. What should I do? I mean, sleeping with Mai is no big deal, but this would mean sleeping in the same bed as Shirabe. I'm not sure how I feel about that. Although, Mai's going to be there, so it's not going to be weird. It's going to be weird. It's a lot to think about. Hmm. She looks worried. Oh, of course. Didn't, uh... Why didn't I realize? She hasn't lived with him for years. She must be nervous about staying here with him by herself. I still felt weird about being in a bed with Shirabe, but Mai needed me. That's how we will make sure that this happens like this. Enough to make up my mind. Alright, Mai, if you really want to. Now it was Shirabe's turn to be surprised. You sure about this? That's what I said, unless you, um... Look, if you want to, then I don't uh, mind. Then that's that! You wanna sleep between us, Mai? Whoa, hello! Sorry. Okay. She grinned and I felt that whatever my reservations had been, I'd done the right thing. Shirabe cleared his throat and rubbed his forehead, but eventually nodded and gestured for Mai to climb back up onto the bed. Alright then, everybody's sleeping together now. We all laid down, Mai looked at me and grinned. <laughs> it's like I've got a mommy! Yeah, it's kinda like that, isn't it? <laughs> She's adorable. <laughs> she really is. <sighs> I blushed. Ma'am. <laughs> She's right. Not you too. He coughed and looked around awkwardly. Oh, um, I didn't mean that. Uh, it just seemed appropriate given the uh, flow of the conversation. I get him to blush too. My face must have been bright red though because Shirabe still looked uncomfortable. Oh boy. What's wrong? I looked back and forth at us. Oh, you'll understand when you're older. Let's just get some sleep. We've got an early morning tomorrow. Okay. Yeah, yeah, right. Early morning. Shirabe leaned over and flipped the switch. Good night. Sleep time. Good night. Felt a little nervous, I guess. I'm not sure if I'm going to be able to get to sleep. The room was silent for a while, although... Occasionally I could hear Mai or Shirabe move or breathe. She'd fallen asleep almost immediately. Not surprised, she said a long day. Hey, I heard Shirabe's voice in the darkness. Yeah? You okay? You think you'll be able to get some sleep? I'm fine, you should get some sleep too. Guess I should, huh? We had a long day tomorrow. I closed my eyes and despite my earliest nervousness, earlier nervousness, I was asleep almost immediately. Wait, is this going to be something new? No. There we go. Whee! And the car crash. So, we made it to stage six. I'm actually going to call it right here for this recording. And this has been a long recording going through all six days in one go. Uh, but we've got day six and day seven and then the ending. And then we will clean up Shirabe's storyline and Sweet Fuse. Thank you so much for watching. And we will see you next time on RDLP.